so that big story uh, came through on uh, Monday, today's Wednesday, and the central bank, that directive that was sent to the banks in a circular uh, undercover uh, is now being publicly revealed in the press. That's what we woke up to, and now it's beginning to warm its way around. And we showed you a little bit earlier how much a bit of a dent that did to the banking stocks yesterday. We showed you the massive sell-off there in at least 10 of those banks, uh, with many of them suffering uh, nearly 10% decline in share prices. So yesterday afternoon, the analysts at uh, uh, Afroinvest uh, sat down and did what they called a very comprehensive uh, green, blue, red, uh, yellow uh, color for those who will fall within the non-performing loan uh, a threshold and the capital adequacy ratio, what they call the, the MPL and CER, uh, as the central bank uh, has said so. But again, we have quite a lot of analysts also publishing their reports uh, saying that this will have some impact, as it were, uh, very quickly before we get, bring in IODG. But from Codros Capital uh, this morning, uh, they also sent out a very three paragraph and said that they think the, the directive by the central bank would more appropriately reveal the Apex Bank's commitment to financial stability. Uh, the last paragraph says, uh, that said in our view, that the CBN's latest directive is unlikely in the medium term at least affect dividend payouts we expect from the banks covered uh, in their own report. That's from Codros Capital. But here we have the Chief Executive Officer of Afrinvest Securities. He's the Managing Director. Ayodhi Good morning. Yeah, good morning. It's good to have you. Thanks for having me. I'm you. sure you guys have a lot of uh, things on your hands <laughs> with this news in the last 48 hours. Ah, uh, you guys, uh, what, what's been coming through from phone calls, emails, text messages from investors, home and abroad? Yes, I think one major concern from investors is why is it coming now that they feel the market is stabilizing? And um, for some of them, um, don't even, we're not aware that there was, a, there was an existing role that also tries to guide or preserve the capital of the of the company, uh, of the banks rather. Um, what the focus of this um, circular is to strengthen our banks. Um, it's like, like, like a man that, um, that requires blood and is trying to also donate blood. Um, dividend is paid out of the profit you have earned for the year. That's donating, so, that's donating blood. Y yes, out of the, the um, profit you have earned for the year. So if you feel you are not that strong now, that you don't have enough blood. You don't have enough blood. Don't give blood. Don't pay it out. Re deploy it into, retain it as capital, and use that to grow your business. But one thing about when you study the behavior of the, ne the typical Nigerian investors, for most investors are after dividend. And when you look at, even when you look at other clients, um, some com companies, not all companies that pay dividend. You can also earn that your return through capital appreciation. So rather than pay out dividend today and you are struggling to survive tomorrow, and that is part of what is part of the commitment of the CBN to see that our banks are strengthened. For Nigerian shareholders, dividend looks like a certainty. Capital appreciation is a little bit uncertain because they don't monitor every day, so they hardly have an idea. By the time they hear that the stock had gone up, uh, that will be yesterday, day before yesterday news. And before you put in there and say, I want to sell all that on this, perhaps the price, he, the price uh, I've seen uh, turn red all over again. So they look forward to annual shareholders' meetings. They look to, forward to annual general meetings and say, let's say, declaration of dividend. That feel good mentality that's been there for nearly 60 years for Nigerian investors is not going to go away today. Yes, I, I totally agree. but. Part of what investors should also be bothered about is the strength of the, that's the company they are buying into. So if for this year, because of some certain issues that uh, CBN touched on, non-performing loan, you require more capital, don't, if you can't pay out this year or you can't pay as much as you used to, then you, you are you asked to retain them to use for your business. And at the end of the day, it, it would dovetail to improved bottom line. This is the first time uh, since the MFL is three years in office that he seems to be uh, uh, rattling the shareholders in the banking sector. Uh, Lamido Stanusi did quite 
<laughs> quite a bit. And it wasn't really particularly liked by Nigerian shareholders uh, as, as a central bank governor because he seemed to believe that uh, he likes the banks, then the shareholders can go sort themselves out. Uh, well, a little bit of that with Soludo as well, uh, with the banking consolidation. But right now, it looks like uh, Emifele is also looking at, look, I need to preserve the banks. I need the financial system stability. Uh, you shareholders should be ready uh, to take uh, some haircut if necessary because that's the one I can cut. I can cut the banks. Yeah, but part of what we also went further to look at what's the past in terms of historical dividend payout ratio because based on the classification that some of these banks will fall as a result of this circular. Yes. And you we discover that when you look at, you pick out um, Zenith as like when in the last three or five years, average mm. of 53% payout ratio, mm. that falls within the group that can pay as much as 75%. I think no restriction for, for Zenit, for Zenit, yes. for, Zenit for GT Bank. Uh, I'm saying for UBA as well. UBA what you published access. Yesterday. So yes. when you look at for Zenit is around 53%, for GT Bank around 50% payout ratio. When Zenit, um, UBA and Access is around 30% payout ratio. Though, though they fall into the group that has no limitation. So it's when you look at... You, we need to look at into details of how in, in, in the past three or five years, what has been that payout ratio. So for banks that are falling within the threshold of those banks that can't pay more than 30% out of their profit, when you check their historical dividend payout, still tallies with what they have been paying in, um, in the past. And for some companies uh, or for some banks or stocks that are listed, they, are old, they have holding structure. In the past, we've seen, for instance, First Bank has paid uh, through, um, based on the earnings from its subsidiaries in the past. So uh, First Bank that falls into the category that may be likely as the bank not be able to pay dividend out of the bank earnings. But if you recall, First Bank holdings that is listed on the stock exchange is a group. So yes. may be able to pay from the earnings from other subsidiaries. Where, which I think was, was exactly what mm. was done last year. Mm. Mm. Okay, I, I can see that. Uh, your report here, which I'm sure has been creating a lot of uh, uh, fireworks since yesterday, uh, I guess that was on Twitter, uh, that although First Bank is uh, breaching regulatory benchmark, but the FBNH, which is, which is a financial services group uh, listed on the exchange, may still be able to pay dividend from other subsidiaries. But I'm seeing the green, the red, and the orange, and a little bit of uh, those who are uh, a bit of a brown, uh, the reds are not qualified to pay dividends. So I'm looking at the tier two banks here. I'm looking at Diamond, FCMB, Fidelity, Stambi, KBTC, uh, Union Bank, and Wema. Yeah, I think from that group, um, FCMB falls within the group that cannot pay more than 30%. Cannot pay more than 30%, 30 of, it, of, of, of its earnings. Of its earnings. Yes. But for Wema, when you check historically, um, last three to five years, dividend payout ratio has been zero. But I know last year the management did some capital reduction or reconstruction for, for the bank to be able to pay out dividend from its, um, from its earnings. So, um, and based on the analysis, it's the nine months. We're also expecting for some that have maybe in terms of their non-performing known around within the 5 to 10%. Depending on how they've been able to restructure some of these loans, depending on how some of those loans are now become active or performing, then a full year for some of them may be out of this particular group that cannot pay dividend. Depending on, but um, when you check some of those ratios that are significantly higher than even the threshold, then it takes, and when you look at in terms of the weightings of, for those that are holdings, and you look at their weightings as, as a bank, relative to the total group. So most times the ratios that you see from that particular bank will not have any significant dilution when you look at the ratios of the, of the group. Yes. Um, if we still go down this uh, a very uh, lovely uh, table you folks did, the, uh, you, for Union Bank, uh, it says there's a uh, on flattening the minimum capital adequacy requirement, Union Bank cannot pay dividend. That was, you say, in your report. Yeah, based on nine month result, but if you also recall that uh, last year, Union Bank raised about 50 billion Naira through rights issue. Exactly. So by the time you also factor that in, and the essence of that is to recapitalize. So they saw that's being proactive. Okay. So we, by, by, by year end, they may be able to pay 
dividend. And I know boy, when you look at historical um, dividend payments, Union Bank has not been um, among those banks that literally pay dividend in Nigeria. And you see, based on earlier conver conversation on the um, behavior of um, Nigerians, Nigerian investors on dividend paying stocks, that's part of what investors have also been pricing in on some of those stocks that don't pay dividend annually. I'm moving to Stambik. Uh, Stambik IBTC, uh, and your conclusion here remarking from, uh, from Afrinvest is that given the uh, non-performing uh, loans level, Stambik only qualifies for maximum of 75% payout ratio. Do you think Stambik has been able to uh, clear up some of those issues it had in 2014, 2015, and now should be able to pay at least 75%? Yeah, but um, if you also look at falling between 75%, it's still within the, when you check historical payout ratio, has been around 30%. So for, for, for Stambik Holdings, it, it still falls within its, um, the threshold well, its of policy what threshold of mm. what it's paying out. So mm. that we shouldn't expect any reduction in terms of a uh, reduction in the payout ratio as a result of this policy. Well, but I found out that a few banks are not even here at all in terms of Unity Bank, for example, and Sky Bank. Yes, um, I know they're still, um, the CBN is working a lot to see how they can um, um, recapitalize. We know we are, we are aware of Sky Bank. Um, Unity Bank, based on the last result, I think has even negative um, capital adequacy ratio. Um, but because we don't have sufficient details in terms of the financial information on Unity, that's part of why we try to exclude so that we don't um, put out an information that is not accurate. So for those banks that are still struggling, um, you can't be struggling to survive uh, in terms of based on your capital adequacy ratio, not based on liquidity. So not that they are defaulting on their loan, not paying in terms of deposits. They are not um, giving, uh, paying out uh, deposits to, client, to their clients. Or so when so you want this to is withdraw. not a liquidity. So it is not a liquidity. So we have to clarify that. It's yes. not for, a liquidity for the public. For the public. For the public, yes. This is not a liquidity None of these banks have ratio. liquidity issues. issues. But mm -hmm. what the bank is just trying to, uh, the CBN, Central Bank, is trying to do is to be proactive and to strengthen some of these banks. So having 16% uh, capital adequacy ratio, minimum capital adequacy ratio for systemically important banks. Mm -hmm. Because then when it, uh, about eight banks were classified as systemically important banks, that if they, any of them fail or go under would affect the whole economy in terms of number of employees that they have, in terms of deposit size, um, loan size that they have in the economy. So they are required to have minimum of 16%. It's just a, a way to strengthen, have enough capital, so that if you have any sh major shock globally, either your exposure to the oil and gas space, to the power sector, you are able to absorb this shock and investors or customers don't lose their deposits. So mo but for mo most all the banks are able to um, meet up with their obligations. So none of them have any liquidity issue in terms of paying customers' deposits. So if, um, I think um, our viewers should able to distinguish. So to distinguish, yes, the, uh, what is, uh, is a dividend payout issue yes. and not a liquidity uh, ratio uh, issue. I I'm sure we're all getting that uh, right now into what is happening. We'll continue this conversation after the break with Ayo Dijiebo, who is the Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer at Afrinvest Securities. We're going to uh, take a look back into the Afrinvest Banking Report of 2018, which was released a few days, uh, if, uh, about a month or two ago, and see what we can gather from there uh, to look at the direction of the Nigerian banking industry moving forward. <laughs>